Good day, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Community Central, where we examine different open source projects and best practices throughout the Red Hat ecosystem. My name is Brian Prophet. I am a manager within the open source program office here at Red Hat, and I'm very happy to get this new session started. But before we begin and do our introductions, the usual housekeeping notes. If you have a question for our speaker, um, please don't uh, hesitate to ask that. Use the Q&A function within uh, the BlueJeans primetime tool. Um, for those of you who like the question, make sure you vote on it. We will ask the questions at the end of the session um, in the order in which they are most liked. So make sure you get your questions in there and vote on the ones you want to hear the answer for the most. So housekeeping out of the way. I am very pleased to introduce Peter Horacek, um, who is a senior software engineer on the RHEL team, uh, specifically uh, containers, apps, and testing. Um, Peter, thank you very much for joining us today from Brno. Um, please, by all means, take the presentation away. to this presentation on Community Central calling writing reusable GitHub Actions for testing farm workflows. It's my pleasure to present you new technology, let's say, but let's go. First of all, the agenda. What is the motivation? Why to even listen this talk? First of all, first point. The second one is, what is the testing farm? Maybe you already heard, heard about it. The third is, what are GitHub Actions? Last but not least is, how can we connect those two frameworks for our benefits? Is it even possible? And the last outcome is using GitHub Actions with the testing farm in your upstream project. First of all, before when we start, I would like to make some introduction what is the difference between packet versus testing farm as a GitHub action? Maybe you already heard about the packet. Packet is a useful tool for building RPMs of your upstream projects and testing them into the federal land. That's a cool. But what about if your project does not build the RPMs? Is it possible to test your upstream project in Fedora system or even rel i can say yes this is possible why a testing farm as a github action this is a nice picture why because you can imagine that you are you have an upstream project and you are shipping the upstream project into the sam linux distribution and are you sure that your github repository or even if the project works properly after every committed change during the pull request change and this presentation has an aim to show you how to integrate your upstream test and test them in the fedora or rel as soon as possible this is important we need to guarantee to customers that everything is working properly as soon as possible. Let's go to the brief introduction to the testing farm itself. Testing farm is an open source testing system offered as a service. You can run your test on different Linux systems like RHEL, Fedora, CentOS, or even CentOS stream distributions. The entry point for testing farm is a HTTP-based API. And for using on the testing farm, you need three points, three key points. First of all, is an API key, which is, I will talk about it later on, which is used even either on the public cloud or private cloud. Don't worry, I will talk about it later on. The second is TMT plan. What does it mean? It's a testing 
management tool which shows testing farm how to run your test, how to prepare your machine for an environment for your test. And the last important is you need your upstream test. If you don't have upstream test in your GitHub repository, how you are able to guarantee that everything is working properly? We need to do it in our projects. Next point is the testing farm itself as a service. And what is the result? The results are loops and the important results, whether to test are working properly or not. Well, the next key point is GitHub Actions. What are they do? And they automate all your workflows for CI and CD in your repository. In case you would like to run them, then there are three runners available in GitHub Actions. First of all, Ubuntu, Linux base, definitely. The second one, Windows, and the last one, Mac OS, even. What are possibilities with the GitHub Actions? What you can do with them? There are three few triggers options which, are, which we are using in our projects. First of all, merge pull request. Let's say that you have a pull request and as soon as you are merging the pull request, you would like to test them again if the master branch is not corrupted or main branch. As soon as the test is passing, then the project itself can stay in your repository or, for example, in containers, you would like to push the container to Quire or update the another registries. The second one is release. This can be used as well for GitHub, from GitHub Actions point of view. When you would like to release your project, which is Python based, then let's release it on the PyPy or Copper, TPen or whatever you want. But the important question from your uh, important action for your project it's not the merge request, but pull request, which means that when the com contributor, any computer, will file a pull request against your repository, GitHub repository, you would like to test it. And that's an issue comment. In some cases, the component, or sorry, uh, in some cases, the contributor will try to fi file a pull request with uh, boiled code, and you do not want to uh, destroy the infrastructure on your system. And issue comments mean that, okay, I know, what does it mean? What if the pull request is changed? What code is changed? And if I am sure, okay, nothing is broken, let's start the test. And the last one, scheduled. What is you used for? Let's say that you have a container, for example. You would like to regularly, each Monday, let's say, build the container, test the container, and push the container to the choir, so that the upstream has the latest, greatest build. In the meantime, so that we are going through the presentation, I will run the our demo, because the tests are taking too much time, and therefore, I will try to do it now. Give me a second. Just writing the comment. I know what does it mean, and we would like to see real life. Okay. Let's go back. At the beginning, I said that we using testing farm as a GitHub action. What is the design? The design is that every GitHub action is written in YAML file on specific operation system. You can use GitHub actions and reuse them for your upstream project. That's definitely a cool point. 
But this time, testing farm as a GitHub action is used directly on the testing farm. What you, you need to specify is when, how to trigger test. Provide the API key from testing farm. I will show later on where to get it. Provide the testing management to plan and upstream test and select the runner. The rest is on the testing farm. Don't worry, don't start anything. And the last action is file results to your GitHub repository. At the beginning of this project, we did this. If you would like to use testing farm by yourself or implement yourself all steps, then I can easily describe what you have to do. First of all, to read your action. Specify what text has to be mentioned in the pull request, not automatically. Like I said before, you can or the users can destroy the infrastructure. And important, if you are if you own the GitHub repository, then only authorized users can run trigger tests. Okay, everything is ready and we can schedule the test. We have to provide via HTTP API how to schedule the test. This is a simple JSON script. But if you schedule the test, you, need, you would like to get uh, results from the testing farm. How to do it? There are several options, several states, which you have to uh, look at it, care about it. And the last one is that when the testing has finished for all Linux operating systems, which you select, then you would like to update the GitHub status. Why? You would like to see what kind of test on special Linux distribution works properly or it failed. At the end of the presentation, as soon as it will be sent, there are links how we do it. And the last, which is not required, is in some cases, you would like to mark in your pull request the message or send the message which kind of the operation system was used, what was the command and what was the status. This is all picture how it works in pull request workflow. But you can imagine this is a boring stuff. This is a long stuff how to do it, tracky. It. But we have a new, I would say, global solution. You need only specify three things. Trigger action, again. Allow authorized users only. And the rest is on testing farm as a GitHub action. Don't care about the statuses. It is owned and done by this action. We have created this composite action for the users, not for us, for free people. As I said, as soon as we created this testing farm, we uh, published it to the GitHub Marketplace. You can download it, use it in your upstream project. Easy as possible. And let's go to the, some more details. There is a, in the presentation, is a link to the uh, CentOS Stream 9 plan, I will show you later on. But what is the minimal use case? Minimal usage. First of all, in your pull request, you need to check out the report, definitely, for the correct pull request number, so that you have, up, you have pull request changes. And the second one, call our GitHub action for testing your project. Provide the secrets API for the testing farm and URL to your TMT plans where you describe how what to install on your operating system. Maybe 
you can ask, okay, I have to some, some, somewhere place the secrets so that they are hidden for, for the other users. This is not needed. GitHub already provides the mechanism how, where to store your secrets, which are not shown to, your, to others. Let's go to the organization settings of your GitHub repo, secrets and actions. And you can see here, there are a lot of, in our repository, a lot of secrets, which, are, which we are using in our tests, like uploading to the PyPy. Uh, at the end, you can see of this uh, picture, internal API key for testing farm. Well, I have already said that testing farm can be used for the two uh, hosts, public range and private range. If you are delivering the package, or sorry, not package, if you are you working on some project, you would like to test it against the several Linux distribution. In a testing farm, testing farm provides two ranges. First is public range, which is Fedora, CentOS 7, which is let's say old, but CentOS Stream 8 and 9. You can test your project against this together with, with our GitHub action. And private range. Your project can be easily tested on the RHEL, all versions, from the 7 till 9. And even if you would like, you can use the Oracle Linux. Well, how does it look like the real life? At the beginning or in the middle of the presentation, I wrote to the some pull request command test dash all, which means that the all the tests are started on the testing farm. After a long time, you can see that there are statuses on the GitHub pull request where you can see that CentOS Stream 9 is working properly, every test is parsing, CentOS 7 as well, but RHEL 8 tests are failing. Why? Of course, the reason is that I broke the functionality for this community uh, central event so that RHEL 8 is failing. But this is a real use case, how you can detect what is working, what is, work, what is not working. What is the message outcome? This is not the last site. The outcome of the community event is that if you do not create the RPM packages in your uh, upstream project and you would like to test it, then simply use this action and do not care about the testing farm status. Easily onboard and use. We already did some actions around it and do not reinvent the wheel. It is easily implementation, it is easy implementation to onboard. Who is used this testing farm? Testing farm as a GitHub action is used by SCO org organization. Complete upstream containers uh, developed by Epson Stacks team are tested. With this, every broken is, has to be solved. The second one team which, which used this action is Leap Team, which cares about the uh, upgrading the rail systems, rail 7 to rail 8. And the last, which, is on, which was onboarded by our uh, testing farm as a GitHub action, was documentation team. What are the important links before the end? First of all, testing farm as a GitHub action in marketplace. Just there is a readme, how to use it, how to onboard it, and what to do. The second one is if you would like to, if you want to use the testing farm, then you have to, uh, have to onboard it. Easily write the mail to the testing farm team. They will provide the API for public or private range and use it. Documentation, 
how to write the T TMT plan. The second one is software organization examples. Let's take an inspiration. How to easily use this easy solution for your upstream project, for testing your upstream project. And the last one is that we already, together with my teammate, wrote some articles on developers Red Hat Com. Let me show you at the this plan. This is a testing plan how to prepare the operating system for your test. This is testing plan for CentOS 7 Stream 9. You can see here that we, first of all, when we uh, install the con uh, test the container, we need to provide them everything, uh, like uh, portman command and the rest. We clone the repository, fetch the pull request, and at the end, test the con container itself on the CentOS Stream 9. Easily, this is the easy solution how to set up the machine and test the your project on the test the CentOS Stream 9. Okay, and that's it. Maybe I can ask you. Have you already started with integration testing farm as a GitHub action into your project? If you would like to, really would like to test your project against the REL system Fedora CentOS 7, let's implement our way. That's all. Any questions? At this time, we don't have any questions. Um, I know in the chat there was a question about how to get started with this, um, and that there is an instance running. Can you talk about, like, for Red Hat Associates attending this session, how do they get started with doing this themselves? I guess we have a one one uh, question. Is there a link documentation showing how to create DMT test script? Uh, yeah, great, Leif, great. Uh, at the presentation is a, a documentation. Give me a second. Maybe I can share again my screen. Okay. Here is a documentation which will be available on the presentation, how to write the system management tool and how to prepare the system. Or you can take an inspiration from our scripts. Next one, what kind of the systems are available? I noticed there was an RHEL 8, OpenShift job. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. Uh, our containers are, were at the beginning testing only the containers, like uh, from command line. And later on, we decided that we, it has to be tested, uh, it has to be tested on the OpenShift 4 as well. From this point of view, we need to set up our our OpenShift uh, cluster and provide to the our TMT plans only kubeconfig and password. And of course, prepare the test suite for running containers in the OpenShift. Yeah, everything is possible and our tests are covering even OpenShift 4. Okay. Um, Jake has another question. Can testing can the testing farm handle large product environments, such as up to few hundred gigabytes of RAM, eight CPUs, 50 gigabytes of disk? 
space as an example? Yes, thank you for this question. I guess because I am not the part of the testing farm team, I would uh, I would ask the these folks. I can sh send these. Uh, I can write down these on the chat. Uh, the responsible person who can tell you what is the limit. Yep. Okay. So it's already in the chat. But thanks we'll for this include, question. No problem. We'll include that information when the recording is posted on the source um, and in YouTube. Um, next question from Leave. Can I integrate jobs against my own PSI quota, like launch instances and resources for shared resource usage? Uh, I guess no, because the based on the last discussion with the testing farm team, they are provisioning all instances even even either on the OpenStack uh, or on the AVS on the Amazon. But thanks for the question. Okay. Um, the Mulhern asks, does TMT support real storage uh, devices? Most of our tests can be run on GitHub supplied infrastructure because we use loop devices there. We like to run real storage devices and would have motivation to see this TMT action if that were offered. Thanks again for the question. Uh, as far as I know, the testing farm team provides uh, is a provided as a service, and uh, they are able to prove you are able to, um, let's say, start the testing farm on your real storage devices. You can somehow modify it, but again, contact the testing farm team. I am not part of this, this team, and ask them, I guess, why not? You can then combine our approach together with them on the real storage devices. Um, so Peter Mir Miroslav is asking to join. Is that okay? Um, yeah. To ask, all right, so we will bear with me for a moment. I haven't done this for a while. Here we go. I'm gonna add Miroslav. Uh, to the as a presenter, and that will take a moment there. So if you turn your mic and camera on, you can join and answer some of these questions directly if you'd like. Sure. Yeah. I, I will be happy to definitely. Maybe we can jump into the previous questions. We have still time, right? So maybe I can answer we also do. those. Which, uh, so yeah, about the. Uh, Maybe, which was the first one, I'm sorry, no. I'm sorry, I thought you had questions to answer directly. Yeah, yeah, I can answer any of these questions because I'm the testing farm team lead, so I guess Petr doesn't know all the answers, but I do, right? So right. I'm, I'm happy to answer. Maybe we can start with the last one with Mulhern. She was asking about the real storage devices. So currently that's something that we are working on, uh, like adding more disks and adding more network devices. That's something that uh, we are currently working on, but it's not ready for prime time. That's the first one. But uh, we are planning to support uh, basically more real storage devices uh, via Beaker, uh, but also via uh, other clouds which support adding more drives, for example, uh, to the instances. Right about the, uh, using your own PSI quota. So currently, basically, the testing farm, the two deployments, the public and the Red Hat one that Peter talked about, uh, are some uh, are looking at the infrastructure via our credentials. We have ways how to currently uh, add add the additional uh, uh, credentials and 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 like make it available to testing farm, but it's not like a nice service. I would say that you can just click it from somewhere. So, but we are able to do that. So if you have your own OpenStack credentials, like we can set up a special pool for you and you can start using it via testing farm and directly referencing it via your request. Um, and I guess then we can continue with Jake. So can testing farm handle large product environments? So currently for CPU, memory uh, and RAM, we, on the Red Hat range, we are able to 
we have specific flavors available uh, and yes you can ask for also larger instances and those environments actually are uh, something that we support so 20 gig of ram i think we have up to 64 uh, we are mostly relying on aws uh, also in red hat and also in public we have uh, aws uh, connected directly to the internal network we use most spot instances um okay can okay. i just read the other ones or i would just no let thank you. you so here's what we'll do we have a couple more new questions that have come in and let's see how you can both answer them so yeah we have a question generally that says do we have an active testing farm on an in, on internal red hat hardware that was a question that had come up earlier in chat as well Yes, we do. So, like that's that's the, one of the main use cases that we have, right? So, the whole RHEL CI currently uses testing farm as the backend. So, yes, we have an internal deployment that can use most of the internal infrastructure, Beaker. I mean, test infrastructure like Beaker, OpenStack, and this AWS that I mentioned. So, yeah, we this is this is the majority of the work that we do. I sent actually a statistics page just to get you an idea about like internal and external usage. So yes, definitely possible. And it's our main okay. use case. And then an, another general question, can you provide examples, and this is for both of you, of the types of jobs that would run in testing farm and examples of the types of jobs that are appropriate to run in testing farm? What kind or and and or what kind of jobs are not appropriate for this tool? Uh, so for our main use case, as we are coming from RHEL, and this is where testing farm began, like in RHEL, we are concentrating on testing the operating system, but we can also run tests against any container via rootless podman. So that is the second use case that people use, but these, but the all scenarios are single host currently. Like we are working on the multi-host scenario, but everything is just single host, meaning that when you request a re testing request from testing farm, you get one VM or one bare metal machine or basically one container that, where you can do basically what you want. You have full root access. Um, for the multi host scenarios, we are coming up currently. The solution it's like a big change for us, and I think it will land somewhere in Q1 next year. This is one of our main focuses where basically we want to support multi host scenarios where you can basically provision machines somehow together and somehow orchestrate them together, right? But uh, because this was not the majority use case that when we started testing farm, it was not created, uh, not, not, not implemented right away. But we are working on it for these multi scenarios. In those multi scenarios, you can imagine that you will be able to test, for example, RHEL 7 with RHEL 8 or, uh, and something similar. As for some other use cases like provisioning open shift clusters and other stuff, you will need to do it by yourself from your test. Like currently, it's not something that we support that, for example, we would provide OpenShift clusters as a service now, but you can trigger from GitHub an action that uh, shares some secrets to the testing farm safely, run in internal infra and contact Ive or whatever to get the clusters and do whatever testing. So uh, in these terms, you can basically orchestrate your testing from that job that it has access to the internal infra, but we do not provide, for example, OpenShift clusters as a service and so on. Feel free to contact me for more details so we can discuss your use. Yeah, to the to the question, I posted the link to the outer container text, which are metrics based from the GitHub action, and you can take an inspiration how we are running the test uh, on the nginx container against the several Fedora rel and whatever. Yo, yep. Okay. Next question is from Fendi, who asks, "Does TMT and Testing Farm support uh, bare metal currently?" Yes, <clears throat> via Beaker, currently only via the Beaker infrastructure, so currently only internally. Um, we don't have good infrastructure for bare metal in public, uh, and for AWS we didn't yet enable it because it's not cheap and also with spot instances there is a problem. But um, inside Red Hat, uh, currently the bare metal uh, workloads are done uh, via Beaker. Uh, of course, uh, testing farm is a backend for the CI systems currently, and we don't think that bare metal machines are the great fit for CI, but of course, like we want to support it, but the majority stuff we are trying to move to VMs, and that includes PPC64, Alien, S390s, via IBM Cloud, something that we are working on right now, because that's a lot more easier to get for the CI, or a lot more makes a lot more sense for the CI use cases. Um, 
so yeah, definitely possible via Beaker. But as I said, like it's not a cheap resource, and it uh, you know just the provisioning of Beaker resource can take 20, up to 20 minutes or even more, depending on uh, the, how how much people are using the resource that you are interested in. Okay. New question: Does the testing farm currently support tests on architectures other than x86 64? Yes. So uh, in in public, we support uh, ARM64 and x86-64. This is the limitation that comes from the AWS users because we are uh, tied to the Fedora uh, AWS account, and uh, this is what currently AWS supports. Uh, internally, we support all infrastructures. Uh, again, with AWS, we support x86-64 and ARM. Uh, uh, x86-64 is also available via OpenStack, the PSI OpenStack infrastructure that is internal. Uh, and for uh, Beaker, very, we can test basically any architecture. So yes, we support all architectures available. Of course, we are limited by the test, some of the testing that I mentioned. Yeah, thanks for th thanks for this uh, answer because uh, everything what is supported by the testing farm, like the architectures which we are currently uh, uh, supported or in the future, then our tool is able to drive it as well. I mean the the other architectures will be supported as well. And I, I would think one big thing is that uh, that we like that basically if somebody onboards with us later once we add more supported infrastructures, uh, there will be basically no change to the user, right? We provide it basically as a service, as a middleware. So uh, when we onboard IBM Cloud with uh, S390 and PP64 LE VMs, basically the users will just be able to start using it without needing to even know that they are now routed to IBM Cloud, for example. I believe we've come to the end of the questions from the audience. So um, thank you all very much for submitting such great and detailed questions. Um, I'd like to thank our two guests, Peter uh, Petter and Miroslav, um, for joining us today and answering uh, all these questions about testing farms, which really sounds like a great tool uh, moving forward. Um, so thank you both. You as well. Thank you, Mary. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. So with that, we're wrapping up another edition of Community Central, and actually the last uh, episode for 2022 and season eight. We'll be back in 2023 with a new season of Community Central, um, and focusing on best practices, open source community, and open source. Uh, technology. So until then, be well and be safe and have a great day. You too, Brian, to all, and thank you.